this point, I'd like to share with you bracket placement. And this is the first step that we're going to need to be able to create a directly printed transfer tray for indirect bonding using flash free brackets from 3M. Now what you're looking at is an already prepared scan, so it's in a model form. We're in ortho analyzer, we've got our test patient, and we're going to go ahead and choose bracket placement. I need to tell it if I'm going to be doing a maxilla, mandible, or both or from and where I'm going to start. I like to start with the maxilla. And then this occlusal plane was already established when this model was made. You're also going to see a plane that will help you determine anterior from posterior, sagittal, and horizontal. Sometimes those need a little bit of tweaking. Usually they don't. And then we're going to go forward. At this point, I'm going to tell the computer that the third and the second molar is missing and then that third molar is missing. If I have any missing teeth within the arch, I'm also going to indicate that as well. Then I'm going to pick where I'm going to start, and I'm going to place points mesial and distal of each teeth. This is what you hear people refer to as segmenting a model, and you may find in the future this becomes more and more automatic, but currently what we need to do is pick both the mesial and distal. You'll probably find that most of you are much faster than I am and selecting those points. and You can modify them later if you find that you've picked a place that might be just a little bit unusual. Once we've established those points and we're pretty happy, if for some reason sometimes I'll miss and maybe I'll find a point down there, you can pick and drag it up where it needs to be. So we want to have pretty reasonable points. Then we'll go ahead and pick some next and what's happening now is the computer is taking the scan and dividing it into other into segments for us. It'll do some trans, um, some tracing. Sometimes I'll see some unusual points and a lot of times it has to do we can see even when there's a reflection um, in that scan. So I'm going to tell the computer let's change that and if I go over to fast edit it's going to let me draw a line. If I unclick that I can then move these into individual points if I need it but let's go fast and see if we can get a better line there. And then sometimes you'll see it in, in second bicuspids or even molars. Um, you may see that it um, creates a line that's based on the reflection that ends up in the occlusion. And we don't have to be super particular about it. And my second molar points sometimes confuse it as well. There we go. So now we've got our segment. And let's go ahead and fast forward. And you're going to prepare the lower arch to Sorry, this is taking a while to render. Oh, one thing I forgot to share, and I'm not sure why we still have that, but it's not going to matter, so we're not going to go back. If we take a look at these black lines, I want them to be relatively parallel to the occlusal surface. Um, if you would need to adjust them, where you can go is from this point here. Oops, I'm still on fast edit. I need to set tooth axis. So that's really what you're kind of imagining where a root could be. And again, we're just using our scans. We're not overlaying with a, a cone beam, which you could. You can see how this one's not quite an a right angle with that central incisor. So what I'm going over is highlighting it. Or you can simply use your arrow keys um, on your keyboard to move within the arch. But I'm just going to adjust that just a little bit. Sorry, I forgot to tell you that part. And then we'll go back. It's going to adjust some of those points for us. Oh, there we go. We're just gonna we're just gonna ignore that for right now. So I really like this scan. There's some really fun things to take a look at. Now what you're looking at is the F8 points. That's really the facial axis point. It's picking the long axis of the tooth, the mid crown, and placing that point there. Now that point is what's going to be used to place your bracket. Now we'll look at some other um, in another part, another slide. I will show you if you want to adjust where that bracket placement is based on some customized settings that you can put in control panel. But this is just going to be using kind of the standard settings that are there. So if I were to see something that was really bizarre that I thought was really off, I can move that. And what I need to do is unlock those points and when it's green I can move those points and here I just move freely 
and I could take that point and I could move it. Sorry, I locked them. I need to unlock them. I'm sorry, they need to be red to move and I can move them through here. So at this point, I could could move it if I liked it, then locked it in. So what we need to always have to be able to move on to the next step is to have everything locked in and it'll be green. So those points are going to hold for us and we're going to go to the next step. And then you'll notice we're going to do the same preparation steps for the lower. If you don't want to watch me do it again, you can fast forward. And we're going to tell it where we're starting. And again, we're going to pick the mesial and distal points of each tooth. Sometimes they're rotated. It gets a little bit tricky and to make sure that you are not overlapping those points so that truly can divide these teeth into segments. So this one was kind of fun. We're going to see how I did. Oh, I'll see I didn't do very good with that one. Again, that's why I chose this one. If they always look perfect, then you know I'm a liar. So we're going to go ahead and I want to retrace that so that I can get that spline there. Up, oh, looks like on the back too. I need to just adjust a bit. And that's on that cusp, but that's really rotated. Let's see how we're going to do here. So then we're going to go forward. We just hit next. And again, some of these steps are the ones that take a little bit longer um, based on the processing speed of your computer. There we go. So we can see we now have our model that we're going to be able to proceed. If for some reason I don't like the way some of this looks, I can go in with the sculpting tools with a wax knife and I can clean that up. And that may be more um, important if you were going to be doing maybe an aligner setup, but I don't think it's going to affect us. Again, we're going to look for all of those FA points to make sure, like if you look at this one here, that looks a little bit different there. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight. I, If you notice, I highlighted move freely. I like that new position. So I'm going to lock it in. And I'm going to lock all of them in. So now we've got a new position for the one cuspid. And now we're to, to arch wire placement. We need to see where we're going to place it. Now usually I go along with the FA point. So I don't really... Um, adjust this a whole lot, trying to bisect the majority of those FA points. Now, arch wire placement, it's going to choose an arch wire that really has a similar arch form. Now, you kind of have to be careful when you place your arch form. What happens if you go back too far? See how it really uh, constricts the arch? Or if you put it too far forward? So sometimes if you see really bizarre things with your setup, it could be even potentially just where you placed your arch form or what size arch wire you placed. Right now I'm going to get rid of that extra view and um, just makes it a little bit easier for us to see what we're what we're attempting to do. I'll go ahead and pick that arch wire and then we're going to do the same thing for the lower. We're going to pick the plane. You know, Sometimes you may find that you're going to need to rotate that due to say this is really a dental mid midline, this is a skeletal midline so I'm going to keep that on and then I'm going to go forward and get to the bracket placement part. A lot of times here, uh, if you go over to the right side, on the right side is where you can make things appear, disappear, or become more translucent. See, if you go ahead and kind of slide that, you can make things disappear. Um, if I want to get rid of the arch wire, a lot of times I will do that. Oh, I don't want to get rid of the teeth. If I want to get rid of the gum tissue, I could do that as well. And some people prefer doing um, their setups this way, so they're just concentrating on the teeth. So we can keep that for a little bit, and then we can always switch it back if we'd like.
but I do like to get rid of the arch wire. It tends to be in the way. So here's where I get to choose which library and prescriptions I'm going to use. And I'll show you in another slide how you create this library. If you go to the, your control panel, there's going to be all kind of brackets, hundreds of brackets from different manufacturers. And I'm going to show you exactly which ones you're going to want to choose that are th not only 3M brackets, but are also the bracket file that is flash free. And there's going to be something else that's going to be very special about your file that you're going to see as we proceed through here. So let's go ahead and we're going to pick Let's see what do we want to pick I believed he wanted ultra so we're gonna go ultra on the top and you can see your brackets are generated now there isn't anything on the molar because obviously there aren't ultra brackets for the molar but if I click on the molar and then if I hit the control key I can pick the other molar and now the bracket for the library for selected teeth these are the teeth that I selected I could put a bracket on there. So I'm going to pick a molar bracket here and you're going to see they're going to appear. Now part of the reason I really like this case is for me often when I have really um, high set cuspids I do something special. I think a lot of times people will flip um, their laterals. So let's go ahead and we know we're going to be able to adjust that later but something I like to do to create a torque differential is I will put a central bracket on there. The computer wants to put a cuspid bracket on because it is a cuspid, but what if I want a central? What I can do is highlight that. I can then go ahead and pick tooth number eight, which is a central, and you notice it switched that bracket. I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to highlight that tooth, and I'm going to pick what number I'd want on that, and that would be tooth number nine and you'll see that bracket will switch. So you may find if you do like an 18 slot or an 022 in the post here, you can create that as a custom library. But if I forgot to create a custom library and I want to switch brackets, whatever tooth I highlight, turn a color, and whatever, say if I want to put a different type of bracket, anything I choose will go on to that tooth. Now once I have my brackets on, now I'm going to go ahead and I want to adjust them. Now what you need to see is that you need they need to be red for you to adjust them. Green means you're ready to go to the next step. That's where I always get confused. It has to be red. Now if I want to go ahead and take say these uh, the uh, laterals, I want to invert them. I can take them and I can simply invert them. Now let me put the digit of it back on because there's something you need to see here too. And I'm going to go ahead and adjust. But over to the right hand side, there's disable collision detection to antagonist, disable collision detection to gingiva. And a lot of times I will keep those. Um, I want to be able to see if I'm hitting the gingiva, but sometimes it'll interfere. Say if I was going to go ahead and I'm going to try to spin this bracket, see how it won't let me come into gum tissue there and sometimes I need to be able to spin it or move it and that will interfere with the movement. The disable collision detection to antagonist is going to be important on the bottom. So once I determine where I want to place my brackets I've got my centrals on my cuspid which may seem really unusual to some people but it's an awesome way to create a 27 degree torque differential when you are trying to um, tuck in those buckle roots. So let's take this one, we're going to flip it around. The only thing it won't let me do is it won't let me put a bracket on both the buckle and the lingual, but it'll let me put any bracket I want on any tooth. So these came in a little bit below the FA point. Alrighty, we're super close to what we're going to keep. And then we're going to go ahead and then we need to lock those in place. They all need to turn green for us to be able to. Um, and I'm going to unlock that one to get that in the position. Then I'm going to relock it. Make sure they're all green and we're good to go to the next step.
So let's get, oh, I'm sorry, let's get rid of the arch wire. Sorry to make everybody dizzy there. And let's choose, let's, he wanted smart clip on the bottom. So we'll use some smart clip on the bottom. Now, this is why, um, this is what I really like, because you're going to see those occlusal interferences. So it's going to let you decide how you're going to deal with that. We'll go ahead and remember if you highlight one tooth, you could put a bracket on. If you want to do multiples, if you keep the con the um, control button, you can do another one. If for some reason you do one and you do the shift button, it would do all of them. But that's not really what we want, so we'll just do both the molars. Now the library for selected teeth, I'm just going to go ahead and prick the molars that I want which are my victory series. Now here's when we go to adjustment. This is where I really like this part to be highlighted because I already can see that I'm going to collide with the upper but if that isn't activated what would it won't let me move that bracket because it won't let me interfere with the antagonist. So if I'm okay with some occlusal interference like I'm going to be doing bite turbos turn that on and you turn these both of those on so you really kind of can free up the movement that that you want There might be a little bit of tweaking we need to do if I probably would have done a better job at my FA points I might not tweak at all you know obviously if you try to stick a bracket in a weird spot it's not going to let you run it into that tooth um, so you may find you know that you're still going to have to reposition some brackets and sometimes you'll see the incisal edge positions a little different because when it sets it up it's trying to keep you out of um, occlusal interference so when you click that on it'll let you move these to the position that you want you can see we've got some gingival interference there if I try to move that bracket I can't it's not that I want it in the gingiva but I would like to be able to move it and get it to a bit different spot knowing that I may have to go back and replace those. Yeah, this bracket, there's not a whole lot showing on this tooth. And I want to try to get down a little bit lower. So if I do that, that'll help me out. Alrighty. So we're pretty close. Remember, you got to lock them in. For some reason, if you forget to do that and you click Next, it will tell you, hey, you got to go back and lock your brackets. So you just go back, you lock them. You occasionally you'll see one that maybe won't and it'll still turn red. Look and see what's what's up. It may be that it's if you you just might need to allow it to be hitting the antagonist tooth, the maxillary tooth. You may have to allow it to be in contact with the gingiva if you want. So often, if something turns red and I can't figure out why won't all of you just uh, allow me to go on, it's usually this 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 interference here with the uppers and I need to check that to let me say basically I'm saying yes I know it's in contact I'm okay with that I'll deal with it later and then so you're now to the point where you can validate and what you're saying is that you're validating that um, you're locking in this position and you're going to want to hold this position as we go ahead and we continue on with the um, tray design. So I'm going to go ahead and validate this. A lot of times I'll keep this auto export out because that's going to uh, export a version of your setup too and and often I don't I don't need that. I just really need to lock in this bracket position. And once that's validated then we are set.